This video is looking at proportionality, which is a crucial concept in A-level physics. Proportionality enables us to construct equations that aren't given to us, based upon relationships that we understand. And it's also essential that we can look at an equation and realise that it isn't just something that we plug numbers into, but it is a mathematical expression of the relationships between each of the quantities. So, for example, what do we mean by proportionality? So, you need to be able to recognise how we would represent uh, on a graph different types of proportionalities um, and what that looks like. So, our first proportionality, and I'm just going to do these in terms of y and x to start with, is directly proportional. Now, there's two things that show you that a graph is directly proportional. It needs to be a straight line. Um, and it also needs to go through the origin. Okay, Those are our two things that we need to see to be able to state that something is directly proportional. So what we would write here is y is directly proportional to x. What that means in essence is that as I increase x, y will increase by some proportion. The next type of proportionality that we commonly encounter is inversely proportional. Now inversely proportional is quite straightforward to understand in terms of um, how it is different to directly proportional. The graph for inversely proportional is an asoptic curve that goes like this. Okay, so It never quite touches the axes uh, and so I would write that as y is directly proportional to 1 over x. So that is inversely proportional. What this means is that as x increases, y decreases by some proportion. So that's how it's different. If I wanted to, um, to get a graph of a straight line, what I could do is, rather than plotting a graph of y against x, if I was to plot a graph of y against x to the minus y, uh, sorry, uh, x to the minus 1 or 1 over x, the reciprocal of x, then I would go back to this graph and it would look like a straight line. Okay. Uh, the next two proportionalities that we commonly encounter uh, that I'm just going to mention briefly are y is, e is proportional to x squared and y is directly proportional to 1 over x squared. So this is just a quadratic relationship, so you would have a typical graph uh, that would be a parabola, so you would be expecting a shape that looks like that for y against x, so you'd be expecting a curve, and for uh, 1 over uh, x squared, we call this the um, inverse square law, so for example, if you were to plot uh, the force due to gravity as you move away from the Earth, you would see this relationship expressed, and it looks like that. Okay, <clears throat> so these are our four basic relationships. In year 13, we also are introduced to the exponential function, which shows where a curve is exponentially decaying, which looks very similar to this, but mathematically, it's just it is different in terms of its proportions. Um, and we deal with exponentials as a separate thing, so just be aware of that as well. So the next step then with proportionality that we need to understand is not just these four potential relationships, but we need to be able to spot these relationships in an equation. So for example, if we look at Ohm's law in electricity, Ohm's original law was that potential difference, or voltage as you'll probably know it, is directly proportional to current. That was his law, and he said it, voltage is directly proportional to current when temperature and other physical conditions, such as like the length or cross-sectional area of the wire, are constant. So this proportionality applies when another subset of factors happens to be constant. So I'm just going to group those, temperature for example, uh, the length, cross-sectional area of the wire, the length of the wire, uh, the resistivity of the material, right? So this relationship, just using it on its own, depends on a series of other factors all being constant. What we can then do with any equation that we have that's directly proportional is 
this isn't an equation, this is just a relationship. This just means that as uh, voltage increases, the current will increase. But if I want to use this as an equation, what we do is we have to add a constant. So if I do this for y is directly proportional to x, we to add change the proportionality to an equal sign, we add our constant, which we usually can just call k. And so now this equation I can use, so I have y divided by x is equal to some constant k that is always going to be some constant number, Okay, assuming this relationship holds true. Now the constant for this particular equation is the resistance. So the Ohm's law is used to show that when there's something obeys Ohm's law, the Voltage is directly proportional to the current because the resistance is constant. Because resistance depends upon the temperature, the cross-section area, the length, and the resistivity of the material. So that's so sometimes we use this as natural just constant, but quite often that constant has some kind of proper meaning. This equation though shows us more than this. We can see here if we imagine that resistance is constant, that voltage and current are on opposite sides of the equation, both effectively on the numerator because if you imagine there is no the denominator under here would just be divided by one on each side so this relationship is shown voltage is directly proportional to current if we look at this we can see another relationship we can see the relationship between resistance and we can see here that resistance and current are on the same side of the equation so if i rearrange it all of a sudden now current is underneath so if voltage is constant, then the other relationship this shows me is that resistance is directly proportional to 1 over the current. In other words, the bigger my resistance, the smaller my current is going to be. Uh, I can also say that resistance is directly proportional poten to potential difference. Okay, So the bigger my resistance, the greater the potential difference or voltage I would need in order to cause my current. So this equation starts to show us different relationships. Let's have a look at another example of this uh, in the equation that we can apply to uh, breaking. So um, we use the SUVAT equation, V squared equals U squared plus 2AS, where V is the final velocity, U is the initial velocity, A is the acceleration, uh, in this case the braking acceleration and s is the displacement but in this context we talk about it as the braking distance um, and obviously when something is braking it will start at an initial speed and its final speed will be zero so since uh, v uh, squared is zero i'm just going to get make that equal to zero and that means that u squared plus 2as if that's equal to zero u squared must be equal to 2as so we can have u squared is equal to 2as. So I'm just going to use this as a, as a simple example. So what we can see now is the initial speed of the car or vehicle squared is going to be directly proportional to the distance that it's going to travel before it stops, the braking distance. So the relationships I can get from this, firstly, is that the, braking, uh, the initial velocity squared is directly proportional to the braking distance. I can also get that the initial velocity squared is directly proportional to the braking acceleration that I will need if my braking distance is constant. So what I have to do with this relationship is I assume that my acceleration is constant and for this relationship I have to assume my braking distance is constant. The other relationship I can get from this, of course, is that uh, braking acceleration is inversely proportional to braking distance. In other words, the bigger my acceler deceleration, the shorter the distance I'm going to stop. So we can see we can generate all these different relationships. And we're assuming that u squared is constant here. We can do get all these different relationships from an equation, and each one can be useful to us in the process of an exam question. Just going back to this skill of producing an equation from proportionality, I'm going to use some examples from a from year 13 physics, the way we do do this quite a lot. So, as an example, um, we have a couple of equations linked to gases. So, one is that pressure is inversely proportional to volume. This is called Boyle's law. 
And Boyle's law states that pressure is inversely proportional to volume, providing that the temperature and it, you have a fixed mass of gas uh, is applied. So those are the two things we're keeping constant. Now, if I want to turn this into an equation, what I can do is I can say that P is equal to K over V, where K is some constant. And I can rearrange that to give me PV is equal to my constant. Now, because K is constant, if I have an initial pressure and an initial volume, and then I change one of these factors by some amount, I can predict exactly by how much the other value will go by. Now, I could use this equation twice in order to do that, because K is a constant. It's the number that isn't going to vary. But what I can also do is I can produce one final step, and I can do an equation like this. P1V1 is equal to P2V2. In other words, my initial pressure times my initial volume will be equal to some constant number, which is also equal to my final pressure and my final volume. I don't have to use ones and twos here. I could use letters for final and initial, and that would also be perfectly acceptable. Uh, another example from gases uh, would be that pressure is directly proportional to temperature. So I can do the same process, and I can say pressure is equal to some constant times temperature. And therefore, pressure over temperature is equal to some constant. So P1 over T1 will be equal to P2 over T2. Okay. So this is another uh, relationship from gases by the Sachs law uh, that can give us another equation that is useful. One example of this that you will encounter in AS is that when we consider the drag force, uh, that is directly proportional to the velocity squared. The equation that shows us this, so that you can relate to it, is this equation. So if we're assuming that the density of the fluid, the area and the drag coefficient, which is just a number, are all constant, then we can just see that the drag force is directly proportional to velocity squared. So I'm just using this relationship. Um, as opposed to uh, including these factors. So I don't need to use the whole equation if everything else is remaining constant. So what I can then do is I can say, well, the drag force is equal to some constant V squared, which I can rearrange and I can say drag force over V squared is equal to drag force over V squared, but it's drag one V one, drag two V two. So this equation is useful to me. I can also rearrange it so I can have the ratio of my drag forces is equal to the ratio of my velocity squared, okay, which is equally important and useful for us to use. So proportionality is you need to be able to recognize the shape of any proportionality from a graph. You need to understand that any equation that we look at shows us proportionalities and just represents relationships within equations. And you need to be able to start from a proportionality and produce an equation by adding a constant, rearrange it to find that constant, and then realizing that since that number is constant, I can replicate that equation on the left and right side, for example, with initial and final conditions. So the skills of proportionality will take practice. You will encounter frequent proportionalities just given to you specifically as proportionalities. So for example, drag is directly proportional to velocity squared, uh, or Boyle's law, but then you do need to be able to also use equations that you're given and work out additional proportionalities specifically within explained questions as well.